Kat, welcome to Ghost Travelers Podcast. How are you today? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing good. If you could, can you tell my listeners a little bit about yourself and how you got into the paranormal field? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, so recently is like kind of when I got more into the investigation side of it, but I have seen spirit since I was like a little kid. Um, I think when I was about nine years old was when I really dedicated my life to being a witch, which I know sounds like a very young age to make that kind of decision. But I went on a trip with my parents. My dad used to live in Canada and we drove home down the East coast and stopped in Salem, Massachusetts. And I like came alive. So I was always that weird kid at sleepovers that would have my mom help us like host seances. Um, I think for like my eighth or ninth birthday or something, we tried to bring back like princess Diana and like Selena and you know, we were always doing weird stuff like that. And like, that's just who I've always been. Um, again, now that I'm kind of doing more of the investigative side of it, it's opened up like so many other opportunities. And I just, I, I love it. I think it's all very, very cool. Yeah, same here. So when was it your very first paranormal experience that mostly opened your eyes and saying, I want to do this full time? So the one that I can actually pinpoint, um, my dad had just moved into like a pretty old uh, house down in Fort Worth, Texas, which is where I'm from originally. I live in Southwest Florida now, but uh, my brother and I were sleeping in the same like room and we both woke up at the same time and saw a figure standing in the doorway and he looked like a military um like a i don't know like old school military guy he had like the the old greens um like with the the brass buttons and like the you know the weird hat yeah it's kind of hard to i'm trying to paint the picture but it's a little bit difficult because you know that was a long time ago but anyway we both woke up at the same time saw this guy And I actually was the first to get out of bed and I watched him like walk down the hall into my dad's room and he just like disappeared. And it was like the weirdest. We were both, me and my brother were both like, did you see that? Like, are we crazy? And we told my dad and like minutes after the spirit had like dissipated, the house alarm went off. Oh, wow. So we were like, okay, that's gotta be something, right? Yeah, most definitely. So after that experience, how long did it took you to from then to you want to investigate the paranormal? So I would say probably it was from that time. It took until I was a teenager, really, because, you know, my parents weren't really into the paranormal in the same way that I am. And so, like, I would have to, like, seek out friends that were. So in high school, we would always go ghost hunting um, late at night and grew up in a very very small town Uh, um, and we would always go out to like the country and look at these like old abandoned houses and we never unfortunately went into any of them but we did go to this one spot which actually ironically enough is not even a haunted place but it's called Rainbow Valley it's out in Sanger in Texas and it's just this one road and they're like these hippie houses so their houses are all underground and the above part is all like solar panels so you can't really even tell that it's a home Um, But it's, like, these commune-minded, like, I think, like, if you think of, like, a doomsday prepper, it's, like, that kind of, like, I don't want to call it a cult because I don't even know if they are a cult and I don't want to be disrespectful, but that's just what it reminded me of. They all live underground like this, like little hobbit houses, really. Um, And we would go onto that property frequently. And one time we actually got shot at, so that was really scary. Oh, no. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, I think we were like 15, 16, 17 around that time. Um, And then another place that we always used to go, because, you know, like I said, I've always been a weirdo. So I would always seek out the weirdo people in high school and stuff um, was Goatman's Bridge in Denton, uh, which is also in Texas. And there's like a bunch of folklore behind that spot in itself. But it's just a really creepy spot regardless. For someone who hasn't heard about the Goatman legend, where you investigated, what kind of experiences have you had there? So my really good friend Drake actually had a spirit pass through his car. So that's his story. That's not my story. But my personal story, I was actually out there last, early last summer um, because I wanted to try to investigate. And I had like a very small amount of equipment back then. Of course, my equipment has grown but um i've had like a couple recorders and like a k2 and so i just wanted to see what was going to come up uh we definitely felt like 
a very, very obvious heaviness to the spot. Um, and like I said, I've been going there since I was a teenager. Um, but this last time was especially, um, I guess, notable. I got pretty nauseous in a couple spots. Um, definitely felt like things were scratching at me. We got some pretty wild pictures of like shadow figures out there. Oh, wow. Um, not so I did try to, to record like an EVP. I didn't really get much because that was like kind of back before I knew what I was doing with my recorders, unfortunately. But um, my friends definitely validated that whole experience for, for me. And, you know, we all just kind of talked about it after and we were like, yeah, that was kind of weird. <laughs> so what kind um, of vibes do you got around that bridge? Do you think it was a, a, a good haunting or a bad haunting at the bridge? Uh Definitely very sinister. I mean, that place is known to um, have had, like, satanic rituals and, like, sacrifices done out there. And, like, really the story behind it is this um, African-American, I think he was a goat farmer. I mean, goat herder. I'm, I'm not sure the proper term for that. But he was ended up, like, he ended up um, being thrown over the bridge. By oh, no. The yeah. So it's pretty, pretty tragic and pretty awful. But uh, they say that his spirit still haunts, like, the lands. Mm -hmm. And you'll hear like goat noises and uh, I know people have had like things push their cars over the bridge not like into the water but just like move it off the bridge um I know that there have been a couple of like suicides out there which is pretty sad but I mean it's a pretty tall bridge so there's endless possibilities I guess <laughs> yeah most definitely so in the beginning of the podcast you mentioned that you studied and also you are a witch. Can you tell us a little bit about that for our listeners? Sure. So, like I said, when I was nine, that's kind of when I was like, okay, this is who I am. Um, which, again, huge decision for a nine-year-old, but that's okay. Uh, I actually ended up kind of getting out of it. Because, um, like I said, when I moved to a small town, I was more so involved with the church because that's what, like, all the cool kids were doing. And not that there's anything wrong with that. I'm not just seeing anybody who is, you know, religious or whatever. I'm just more on the spiritual side at this point. Yeah. And so I was, like, volunteering with the church. I was on the worship team, you know, every Wednesday, every Sunday. And I just had a couple of bad experiences that I just never recovered from. And it felt like I wasn't being true to myself. So I've been working with a mentor for the last five or so years who is also a psychic medium. And um, she really just like reintroduced me to, to the world of witchcraft, I guess. And I'm a pretty solo practitioner. Like I don't have a coven or anything. Like it's not really my style. I just kind of like work with the moon. And I, I mean, I consider myself a green witch. So a lot of like plants and herbs and working with the earth. That's kind of what like makes me happy. <laughs> yeah, most definitely. So while you're doing your investigations, do you uh, incorporate your... Uh... Uh, your witch, your witch uh, believes into your uh, paranormal investigations. I do, um, and I've tried to because when I first started out investigating, obviously everything was so exciting to me, and I'm very like I'm a passionate person in general, but I'm very passionate about the paranormal. So for me to like not get excited and be like, oh my god, what was that? What was that? You know, like I get a little <laughs> ghost adventures with it. If yeah. You will. Um, so I've had to kind of dial that back just because now at this point, I am more focused on getting the evidence part of it than, than, um, seeing how I feel. Cause I already know how I feel. That's not the issue. The issue is, okay, well, how do I make this tangible? So if I'm feeling something, so say one side, I'm feeling something and I'm like, okay, well, there's a woman spirit or, you know, a male spirit or a child or whoever, how do I make that make sense to somebody who doesn't know what's going on? If yeah, that, that makes sense. So I'll use the equipment to kind of like marry the two um, and be like, well, this is what I'm feeling and this is what my equipment is picking up on. So like, let's put those together and there you go. Like you have tangibility. Yeah, most so definitely. I, I, I'm the same way. Um, I'm sort of like on a lower level what you are. Like we talked on the phone yesterday. I said I'm a sensitive and I can relate what you're feeling like saying I got equipment to saying hey you guys I feel this spirit over here in the corner of the room and they go over there with a k2 meter and a digital recorder and they capture it and I'm slowly building that up and stuff like that but no I get what you're saying and I believe that's a uh, really awesome that you can do that 
Yeah, I mean, it's definitely kept my life pretty interesting. Uh, never a dull moment, that's for sure. I have learned how to kind of like turn it from on to off just to protect my own energy and my own, you know, well-being mentally because, I mean, you know, it's surrounded by death that can get pretty heavy, but, yeah, you know, I haven't met a spirit I didn't like so far. <laughs> so, for a short amount of time that we have left together during this uh, podcast, you you also have a podcast as well. Uh, can you tell us a little about it and how you got into the podcast field? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm on a bit of a hiatus right now just because life has been a little crazy for me um, with moving and, you know, the whole relocation and all that. And I'm trying to kind of figure out what direction I want to take it in. Um, obviously, I've had awesome, awesome guests on and I still want to continue that. But it's like trying to pinpoint exactly what my goal is with it. Um, but I got into it after, um, I actually had another podcast previous to that one. It was called that came out of nowhere. It's actually not a show anymore, but, um, I ran that with a out of Seattle and uh, things just happened. It didn't end up working out and we're still friends now, but that show kind of died. So I decided because I do most things solo, that's how I kind of started the bewitching hour and that's what it's called. Um, it's still available. You can listen to it wherever you listen to podcasts. I'm just um, really far behind on putting up any new episodes. <laughs> hey, it's okay. I'm we're 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 also do the same thing. We sometimes uh, skip an episode and stuff like that. So, what throughout your, your uh, podcast career, who do you say is your most favorite guest that you have on your show? Oh gosh, I've had so many good ones. Um, I think probably top three would be Caitlin Lee from Stay Witchy. She's also she's a really good friend of mine, and she's also a psychic medium. Um, and then her mentor, his name's Ed Carlton, I've had both of them on. And then Brittany Lee Tarot, she was a phenomenal guest. I think we, our episode was like almost two and a half hours long. I had to really cut that one down. Oh wow! Um, had um, let's see, my brother. My brother's been on. He's a really fun guest, um, Mr. He who is a drag queen that's based on, well, really he's bi-coastal or she is, I'm sorry, she is bi-coastal. Um, I know him as Parker, but everyone else knows her as Mr. He. Um, he was a great one. And then Clementine Von Raddix was awesome as well. They are a non-binary poet from Brooklyn. So I've had like really, really great opportunities with talking to, you know, individuals. Yeah, same here. And the, the guests that you mentioned, they they sound really interesting people. Um, do you have any uh, future, uh, probably um, more guests that you would like to get on your show here soon? Absolutely. And I'm still working on that. I've got a couple lined up. It's just kind of pulling the trigger and making it happen at this point. Yeah, most definitely. Um, again, I would like to say thank you for coming on Ghost Travelers podcast. Um, if you, do you have like any tips or anything that people want to get into the paranormal field or have interested, interest in, uh, Wicca? Do you have any tips for them? Yeah. I mean, I think you just really, you have to follow what feels right for you as far as like, you know, practicing witchcraft or any kind of spirituality, religion, things like that. Just make sure you stay true to yourself. And, you know, if, if something sounds like it's bullshit, it's probably because it is, um, and, you know, with the paranormal thing, it's okay, like, to be solo. Just go for it. You know what I mean? Like, I have found that, like, you cannot let anything hold you back because that's how you miss out on experiences and opportunities, and you just got to go for it. Yeah, most definitely, and I agree with that as well. And also, uh, before we let you go, um, do you have, like, any uh, social media links or anything for people can follow you on or want to be a guest on your show? Yeah, so um, I've actually recently got into uh, TikTok, which has been so much fun. Um, you can find me there at the Tipsy Medium. Um, I'm on Instagram as at the Bewitching Hour underscore. And then, like I said, you can find my podcast pretty much anywhere you listen to podcasts. It's just the Bewitching Hour. Awesome. And uh, the links that you mentioned, I'll put them in the bottom of the description for my listeners and new listeners can find you a lot easier. Perfect. Well, Kat, I would really like to say thank you so much for coming on Ghost Travelers Podcast. And everyone, thank you for uh, taking the time out of your day uh, watching and listening. Take care and travel safe, everybody.